Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bullish or Bearish. I'm Angela Chu and this is my brother Tony and we're from Success Options Group. And so what we're doing in Bullish or Bearish is we're really going to go over a financial topic that you're interested in, that you want to know more about. And we're going to give you both sides of the story, like multiple points of view, so that you can really get into like what the differences are and what actually information is out there so that you can make a decision. Now, what this is, is this is really a taste of what it would be like to work with us, like work with experts to help plan a real financial future where you can get where you want to be. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really what we're all about, like a brother sister team. And we're just we're there to give you that education, get you to that point where you can become a su successful investor, because I mean, that's really what we all want. We, we want to be able to have investments that make us money so that we can keep doing the things that we enjoy in life. Right. And that's, you know, what we get. These episodes are going to be short snippets. You know, we don't, we want to make sure that we don't go, go off on too long of a tangent, but you know, that's really what we have some of our workshops and our private consultations for is so you guys can get to know us better. Right. But without further ado, we can hit our first topic. And that topic is why you as an investor should buy gold. Right. And that's is, this is like, Something we've talked about before a little bit in inflation, right? So check out the prior episode. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, right? Of course. And, um, you know, I've had this slide up before. $20 gold piece in 1932 and what it can buy nowadays, right? As a compared to what $20 in 2018. That's not even talking about today's world. Like, they just announced 6.2% inflation just this week. So, I mean, it's just... It's crazy as us as individuals, as just natural consumers, just how much our, our currency is devalued, right? So that's really where gold comes into play. Gold maintains its purchasing power, right? So I can buy, you know, there's not many things in the world where maintain their purchasing power. But if I buy a car, a new car off the lot, I drive off and it's lost 40% of its value. I, if I try to resell it right away, it just loses its value. And gold is one of the, and gold and silver, right? Precious metals in general. Those are one of the few things that retain their purchasing power over time. Okay. So you say it retains its purchasing power. But the thing is, is that you cannot actually purchase anything with it. Like you cannot take this gold coin that you're talking about and go to the grocery store and buy something. Like, seriously, you take a coin, you go to the grocery store, you say, hey, here, give me some change. They're like, I'm not taking this. I mean, you can't physically actually use it in your real everyday life. I mean, what are you going to do with it? You stick it somewhere in your house. And that's another issue right there by itself. Like, where are you going to put it? How are you going to hide it? Somebody going to come and break into your house and steal it. And I mean, seriously, like, what can you do with this besides hiding it somewhere, like putting it there? Like, OK, so I heard what you said. You, I, I, we'll hit those in different areas. You first mentioned liquidity, right? I just happened to have a $20 gold piece here, right? And this is like $2,200 physically, right? And even though the gold price is $1,800, there is a premium on physical, right? Because, well, we'll have to do that in a different session, right? The, the ETFs versus physical, right? But let's get back to liquidity. The fact is, is that gold has been around forever forever right and like you know they were had donkeys and horses and that like roman civilization gold precious metals has always been a medium of exchange and it's it, it is liquid in the sense that i mean you can't go to a grocery store you can go to a pawn shop you could go to a dealer and you can get um paper currency in exchange right because it is that liquid right it um it's not something that you know it takes a little bit of work right, to find where you can exchange it, but it is liquid in that sense. Okay, but still, you say that it's liquid, but compare it to other things that you could do instead of gold. You could buy stocks. Stocks are a lot more liquid. Even crypto is a lot more liquid. Plus, both stocks and crypto, they both give you, like, what, how much return? Like, some of the cryptos can give you 1,000% return, and even just the stocks, I mean, you actually get a good return on stocks, even if you just do basic index. But like gold, isn't it like negative return or something like that? Like, <laughs> so yes, <laughs> won't deny gold has its place in a portfolio, right? And 
um, just over the last year, its return is pretty flat, right? Uh, but in times of trouble, right? In times of downturns, and right now we're at an everything bubble, right? All time highs in stock, all time highs in real estate, all time highs in crypto. But I can hold this physically, crypto, little electrons inside like, what, what, how do you even hold it? So that's really where the, the beauty of gold, silver, precious metal comes in. It's, it's simple, right? There's not a lot to learn about it, right? It's like, I hold this gold piece, I sell this gold piece, right? And it, it, you know, there's there's a there's a simple madness. There's that ke the kiss method, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? And that's what gold is like. It retains its value in times where there's downturns in the market anywhere, right? This shoots up because it retains its purchasing power, and it doesn't get, you know, there's a whole thing on inflation that we talked about before, and just the gold standard. We're not going to get into that in this uh, in this video, right? Um, you know, you, you attend one of my workshops, I'm going all, all, all on the, like, just keep talking about the gold standard, right? But no, just, it's simple, right? It's gold, it's silver, it's coins, and it's money, right? It's purchasing power. So yes, it is purchasing power. But I mean, we still come back to the fact is, there are other things that you could do instead. So while gold might keep its purchasing power for someone like, you know, for like someone like me or like our viewers, what do they really want to achieve? They want to achieve like, okay, I want my money to be making me money. Gold is not necessarily the one that's going to be making them money. Like what's actually going to be making them money is like investing in something like stocks, even real estate or like, you know, crypto, all of those things have ways of like making money, appreciation, you know, rental, like even with options, it's like renting your stocks. I mean, all of these other things have ways of making money. Whereas gold is like the one thing that doesn't. So, I mean, you're right. So every, every investor is different, right? And that's really what like some of the consults and the workshops will get at is like, what makes sense for you as an individual investor? Um, you know, this is not 100% of my portfolio, right? I'm not gonna, it's a percentage, right? So it's like, I, I, I don't know if I said it right. It's like, you don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? So like you have some real estate, you have some gold, you have some stocks and you have some options and it's it's all poor because that way you're diversified. That's, that's the buzzword, you wanna be diversified, right? Um, but, I need to get back to my main premise that gold is a good investment. It's like you should have gold in, in your portfolio because it retains its value. It's, and it's, I would say it's less volatile, right? So like crypto, it's like up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> it's, it, who wants that in their portfolio? Like, or you know, who wants that to be their whole portfolio, right? You're just going to be, having a heart attack every time you see some volatility, right? So really what it's about is what we're getting at is not that you need to have like make one decision and only do that. It's about, okay, well, now that you know about all the pros and the cons, like how do you make your decision about what percentage of your portfolio is right for you? And that's where you come to one of our workshops or you set up a private consult. And then you can talk to us about what is actually right for you? Because what's right for you is not necessarily what's right for everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I know for sure, right? We're not gonna be sleeping in that bed, that mattress full of coins, right? But there is other alternatives and that's what we gotta figure out what works best for you, right? So make sure you hit the like, hit the subscribe. We're gonna have links for the workshops and uh, private consults in the description. Um, hope you stay tuned, watch out for the next episode. And, you know, we'll see you next time. See you.